Welcome to the grind. This is not the grind today. This is one time it doesn't feel like the grind. Though I am tired and we're standing on a deck that could fall through. Real quick, want to thank Golf Tech. On my hat, on Mark's shirt, huge sponsor of us, 1,100 locations across the country. Chris and all the team over there, awesome to us. We love them. Uh, I wore the Lucky uh, Golf Tech socks today. Weren't lucky yesterday. Lucky today. Try them again tomorrow. Uh, thanks to them. And Seed Golf Balls, seedgolf.com. 42 countries in the – there's a dog going crazy. Uh, seed Golf Balls. W wow. Is he okay? He's excited about Seed. All right. That dog only plays Seed. Seed Golf. He wants to chase him. Uh, great golf balls at a discount price. So check them out. Uh, Mark Baldwin. Ryan French. Mm. Here I mean, let's, we are. Here we are. I mean – Mark and I, where do we start? Do we just start in the Eagle? Do you want to just start at the Eagle? Or how are you feeling this morning? Like, you got on the range. Mm. As I've said many times, like, when it's a short range session, generally means Mark is in a good place. Where, how, did, how did you feel on the range? I felt free. I was swinging freely. And what we said it yesterday, that if you get off to a hot start, and the hot start has to include an Eagle, it just erases most of the mistakes that you've made for the previous 18 holes. And... That brings us to the second hole of the day. Yeah. Uh, second hole of the day, Mark smokes a drive. and Smoked a drive. Smoked a drive. Uh, I think the hole is 621, and we had seven iron in. Well, <laughs> Should have been six iron. <laughs> yeah, should have been six iron. Maybe five and a half. So Mark and I uh, talked a lot about it. We thought seven. It ended about 35 yards short of the pin, and it was not because he hit it poorly. He hit it well. So to say I missed clubbed, we missed clubbed, Le would be an understatement. And just take... Uh, just to take you through for a second what you have to calculate for elevation, okay? Mm, great point. Um, the hole is 620 yards or so. Maybe I think it's 618, actually. Uh, I had 250. I think I, I think we had 270, maybe, yep. to the hole. And it was straight downwind. And you have to factor in the... Elevation. The elevation and the wind. I'm trying to just remember exactly how far we had in. Yep. And I think, I think it was like 272. Uh, and so then you take, you know, you take that off, you're down to like 245, you take 10% off, you're down to 245. Now it's straight downwind, like ripping downwind. And I planned on just launching one up in the air and have it land really soft. It was a super- Longer in the air, the more the elevation. The higher you, you hit it, yeah. the, the longer the ball is in the air, the more you can take off uh, for yardage at elevation. And so uh, I had planned on just, you know, smoking a seven iron way high in the air and having it land very, very softly in this tiny area. And uh, it was up in the air, and it was pretty clear that almost when it was halfway there that it wasn't even coming close. Yeah, we hoped it was in the bunker, that, and it would have been a pretty straightforward bunker shot. It ended up in the rough uh, behind it, and it, it happened a lot today, Mark, is uh, we got a good break from the standpoint of we had a lot. We hit it in the rough, like either around the green or – just off the rough uh, on five, um, and we had really good lies all day. And so got up there, and it was a really good lie. Still obviously a difficult shot, but most of the time you should make birdie from there, considering the lie was pretty good. No, I wouldn't say most of the time at all. It was actually – it was a flop shot over oh, the yeah, bunker, right. and yeah, it was yeah, straight right. downwind. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, I mean, there was, there was, you know, 28 feet probably of green to work with, but the, the green runs away from the bunker, yeah, and it was point. straight downwind. Yep. And, if, you know, it was afternoon, probably 2.40 at that point, 2.35, and the greens are firm. So I just hit this, like, beautiful, high, soft flop shot, and it landed just softly, but still, like, took a pretty big kick. And you you and I both put our arms up when Early. it got within, like, 10 feet of the hole because it was yep. just tracking, and there was just no way I was going to miss the hole. Now, whether it was going to go in or not was a different story, but I had my arm raised in the air pretty darn early and there was a fist pump and jake's here with our food thank god we're starving hungry um but i mean it just changes the game we literally went points. from zero to five and we probably i mean i didn't there's no scoreboard on that particular hole but i'm sure we went from like we i think we when we teed off we we're like t111 and i'm sure we went into like the 80s or 70s immediately immediately one hole. one hole and so and and that stable for scoring, Mark shot even one under on the front, but it included an eagle, and so we turned at five at five points. Um, so, I mean, I I will put more details in the article, but 
can I know what I feel like around the cut line? Can you describe it? Is there a way to describe it? This is a tough one because this is the last PGA Tour start that you know I knew I was going to get, right? And uh, short short of playing my way in through a Monday qualifier, this was the last great opportunity that I had on the horizon this year. So a made cut going into the week, having a weekend to play, changes potentially the course of my career. Uh, and that's the hard thing is like coming down the stretch today, it was like, if you come up one short, one point short, who knows what the meaning of that is, but it, it's grim potentially, but a made cut prolongs all of the hope and all the optimism uh, for the future and the opportunities that may come from it uh, with some continued stellar play. So there was a lot on the line. The stakes were really high coming down the back nine. And I just, I tried to just push that aside coming coming down the stretch and just say, this is this is just golf and you are in full control and prepared for whatever the course is going to throw at you. But, you know, I, I felt good. I felt really comfortable until I got to the 18th tee. I want to talk more in a broad per perspective mark it felt like and mark and i have a great relationship and i thought we talk about all personal stuff and all of those kind of things but when it comes to his career you don't want to talk about the end especially with the opportunity that we had coming up it wasn't like we were like oh is this the end but it definitely felt like you needed to have some something that gave you that carrot that you belonged out here still right like you'd missed it a bunch of mondays did did you did you feel that coming into the Barracuda? I've been preparing for the Barracuda for six weeks. I mean, waking up and thinking nothing uh, except play well at the Barracuda. Visual, waking up, visualizing a great round at the Barracuda. Going to sleep, visualizing the best round of my career at the Barracuda. And this, the Cuda, <laughs> was my it's my Olympics. You know, it's like. It's like how Olympians prepare. I'm not comparing myself to a, a, an Olympian type of athlete, but I'm saying like that's what you have to look forward to. You know, you get this one great opportunity and you have months and months of buildup leading to it. And that's what this was for me. And so you take all of that time and all of that pressure and all, think just the constant consideration of the meaning and the importance of it. And that was all in the foreground on the back nine today? I mean, the back nine was, I mean, uh, you don't talk about the cut line. Uh, I've wrote that many times. I've tweeted about it. Mark and I know what it is. We both see the scoreboards. They're big. You cannot, you cannot miss them. I promise you that. And pros and golf nerds have a sense of what the, the cut will be even before we tee off. So we kind of know. And then, in the back nine, you 100% know where the second to last group, there's no like, oh, it could move to this or move to that. Basically, you know what the cut line is. Within a point, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, does that, Mark, give you, as much as making the cut, and I understand that from a broad perspective, but playing under that pressure, shot after shot on the back nine, after 12, is very difficult. Ten is was played easier today. Eleven's relatively easy. Twelve is easy. But then from there, you just need to make shot after shot. Basically, does that outside of the score and making the cut? Does just the fact that you hit great shots from ten to seventeen under pressure? Does that? Do you look at that as holy cow? I held up under the you know the utmost pressure. Yeah, it's a huge boost, but I look at it as my preparation was exactly what it needed to be, and it prepared me properly for executing under the gun and not making the moment suffocating. Uh, and and I think that I was able to put things in perspective despite having built it up. And, uh, you know, 18, that tee shot got to me a little bit. Uh, we just, we've talked about it with, everyone we've talked about that tee shot with has hit it in trouble, unfortunately, and that somehow crept into my mind standing on that tee. Um, but, you know, that those mistakes happen. One that, of the better bogeys of your life. That's that's <laughs> golf. And honestly, standing on the tee, I knew, you know, bogey was going to be enough, 
right? I was at nine points. Eight points was going to be the cut, most likely, maybe seven points. I was actually surprised when we got up to the green, saw the leaderboard, and it was at seven points. But and that so, didn't matter because five and the five and six, you make six. It's three point minus three points. So correct. Doubles the minus seven or three eight points. didn't really matter. Um, I mean, we're we're gonna eat. Our food is here. I think this has been a great little mini pod. But can you describe? Like how you feel right now? I know that's a very like cliche thing, but is there? Do you think big picture, or is it very much like, oh, this is this is awesome. We need to go play well on the weekend, or it's just like I know I I belong out here type stuff. You know, it's it's just a weight lifted off my shoulders. It's more of like a rebirth, you know, because now it's we're playing from the back of the players that made the cut, but it is a complete free roll. And as we proved today, you make one eagle early in the round, and you're actually in the game. And, uh, you know, the game is afoot, dear Watson. And I think that's what we're shooting for tomorrow is we're going out on a complete free roll. Uh, you know, it's a great relief having made the cut. It's, I'm also ecstatic. I'm thrilled. Um, and it, it's a lot of validation of hard work. But this was step one. And the next step is make another eagle early in the round tomorrow and start catapulting up that leaderboard. Um, I think we'd be remiss to quickly not talk about 16. Uh, Mark? always hits uh well every time that we've played it we've hit uh driver there is a scenario that we've talked about on a certain pin that we would consider not doing it but every time we've played we've hit talk about what the hole is yeah so it's uh downhill par four you can't see the green i mean you can see the pin but you can't see the green uh there's a bunker in front and really you got to come in from the left it's kind of high banked on the left um and if you get it as we proved today as mark proved today the uh, the speed slot you can get it close to the green mark had never gotten to the green uh we were in front a couple times last year right just short of the yeah. bunker which is you know 15 yard short so we're standing on the tee uh the two guys that we were playing with were shorter than mark they had both already hit that's a whole nother discussion about some of club selection but um as so, a caddy you would question yes. our playing partners decisions on that yes i would um but uh so mark it was downwind so we thought we could get close really our goal was to get to the front of the green it was a back pin that would let would have left like a pretty straightforward chip had we got down to the front um and the the wind died and actually mark apologized for waiting and said sorry guys i probably can't get there but i just think it's worth waiting and so they were fine with it and then mark ripped the greatest drive of his life, I would probably <laughs> assume, <laughs> considering the circumstances. Given the circumstances, I haven't hit many 400-yard drives in my life. I've definitely hit a 400-yard drive, but to do it with that kind of pressure in those circumstances when I was outside the cut line absolutely needed a birdie. And the guys who who hit it to the spot that we had hit it to the day before off the tee. Made, both made bogey. They, uh, I think one made par, yeah, but like it was, right. a, it was a gutted out par. Yeah. He had to make a eight footer for par, but they they both didn't get it on the green, so it was just a much more difficult shot for where they laid up. And so I I went full send. I mean I don't often swing a, you know a hundred percent, but I I went a hundred percent, launched it up in the air, and it landed in the perfect spot to so catch a speed slot. Quickly about that, we can't see the green. There's not many fans at the Barracuda, but we have a very uh, vocal, very Loyal. dedicated uh, group of fans that follow us at this at this tournament uh kevin kevin yeah kevin kevin was down by the green and we were at kevin's house for dinner last night we slept at his hit him and martha's uh house the previous year um they've been wonderful to us they came out to pebble beach they're just huge huge fans and so uh we could hear kevin <laughs> screaming kevin was in the hospitality tent that's on the back of 16 and we could hear kevin screaming so we knew it was good we just didn't know how good it was yeah i mean i i just assumed that uh a he had been attacked by a group a of coyotes <laughs> right uh, or we had knocked it on the green had a legitimate chance to make eagle so and then we crested the hill we could still couldn't see it i didn't see it until after our playing partner said wow man great drive Joel and and, uh, and Preston both looked over and said, "Wow, great drive!" And they were Preston was in the the belly of the beast, and he ended up making the cut, which is very good for him on a qualifier. Congratulations to him! But when he took time out of like his full blown, he grind. was yeah, grind. He was struggling uh, 
to to say that I knew it was very good, and then you could see it behind that, just over the bunker at 20 feet. But um, a 390 yard drive to 25 feet uh, when you're one what what we thought was one outside the cut line on the cut line uh, is stones. That's full blown stones. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you for taking me along on this ride. Uh, let's hey, go have a weekend. Hey, I can't thank you enough because without you, this opportunity doesn't happen. And that you called the Eagle today, which launched us up the leaderboard and got our day started. So I have, I have you to thank for so many things, but uh, I don't want to, I wouldn't want to do this journey. I wouldn't want to take this ride with anybody else. And thank you. Uh, let's go get it this weekend. We, uh, and thank you to the Barracuda. We love this place. Uh, hey, Chris, we'll probably be asking for an exemption if we don't win this week next year. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>